Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first day here. Today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial for this gorgeous light up anglerfish greeting card. The SVGs for this card are available through my Etsy shop and will be linked below down in the description. This is basically the tutorial on how I assembled the card and how the pieces will come to you as well as how to add the light up features. So let's get right into it. To start, I'm using a regular four and a quarter by five and a quarter card base. This is just plain white cardstock. You'll actually see later in the video, I decided to swap this out for a black card base, but really that option is totally up to you. This is just a standard card within Cricut Design Space or your other cutting machine software, you will have the ability to alter the sizing of the project. So the sizing is not important but you do need a card base in order to create the card. The next elements of this card that I have are the two matting sheets. I have a plain white cardstock base, which is where I will do the designing of the background, and then I plan to have it matted onto a piece of black cardstock and then attached to the card. Just to add a little bit of texture and layering to the card. I chose to do a black, for the cardstock behind just because I plan to create a sort of gradient effect, an underwater gradient effect that'll finish out with black around the edges and I thought it would blend better. Next up is the SVG pieces. These are the pieces that will be included within the file in my Etsy store. Basically it's all of the elements you would need in order to create this super cute little angler fish. He does come with the cutout in his the where the light would be. Um, on his antenna, I guess it's called. This could be easily fixed and you could add in something so that you don't have the hole if you chose to not have this as a light up card, but I do really love the effect of having this as a card that lights up. So you'll see here we have um, two fish that are featured. So there's a two piece fish there, just a small one in this salmon color. Then I have um, several pieces here for the angler fish itself, the teeth, the eyes, the body, some fins, and then the yellow of the light. The next things I used for this card are some LEDs. These I got really cheap on AliExpress or eBay, and I find I can get them pretty inexpensive for a lot of them on eBay. You wanna make sure that you'll get some that have two different lengths on them. As you saw when I was holding it up there, the two pieces of wire that come off it are both different lengths. The next thing you're going to need is a battery. I'm using a CR2032 watch battery. I find that these work really well for cards because they're not too big and they're not too heavy and they kind of fit in nice behind the layers of the card. This is where it comes important that you have these two prongs on the LED. The shorter prong is the negative side of the LED and the longer one is the positive. So when you're connecting it up to the battery, you're just going to make sure that the longer side of the LED goes on the positive side and the shorter side goes on the negative side. As you'll see, I just tried it there, flip backwards and it won't turn on, but once you've got it set up the right way, you don't have it on. I always recommend that you test the battery and the LED as well before you start making the card and that way you don't get to the end and realize one of them is a dud. The next thing that you need is a really important part of this card and it is copper tape. I found this really, really hard to find in Canada could not find it anywhere. I actually had to order this. Um, this roll I believe I ordered from AliExpress for about two or three dollars, which is a pretty great deal. Um, you get a decent amount of it um, and it's pretty inexpensive. You do wanna just make sure that it is actual copper tape. I've ordered a few on eBay or on AliExpress and really they've just kind of sent me bronze tape that has no metallic quality to it. So just make sure you're reading the description and if you do have any hesitation about it, just contact the seller. Um, mind you, for two or three dollars, the couple times that I've accidentally ordered the wrong thing, um, it was sort of worth it to find out who not to buy it from. The next couple items I have are just some adhesives. I have some regular double-sided tape, some double-sided tape and a little like runner, and then I have some foam squares. Because of the way that the mechanism of the light is going to be set up, the top half of this card is going to need to be propped up a bit from the back to allow space for the battery and the light, etc. So I do have those foam squares. Some general items as well. I have tweezers, mechanical pencil, a hole punch to try and punch that hole for the light to pop through. You could always cut this by hand or cut this on your Cricut if need be. 
I also have some Faber-Castell gelatos here, and this is what I'm going to be using to kind of create that watercolor blended ombre background effect. I sort of want to make it look like deep underwater with the lightest color, the yellow being kind of right behind the light, and then fading out into dark. So it does look on the paper as well, like the angler fish is glowing in the dark. Those are not necessary. You could also do the background with watercolor or simple cardstock. I also have a very worn down tea towel, which I'm going to be using to blend the Faber-Castell gelatos and a plain scrapbook cover sheet here, just so I have something waterproof to work on. So getting all of that out of the way, what I want to do first is take my top matting sheet for my card and basically just plan out where I want to put everything. Um, I'm just using this very backing piece of my anglerfish since I know all of the elements will be stacked on top of it. But this way I can kind of get an idea of how he looks kind of in different positions. I have decided I do want to do the card in a landscape format. You could very easily do it as a portrait format and have him kind of looking down at the fish or looking up at the other fish. But I do really like the way it looks in landscape. So I'm just kind of planning out where he's going to be so that I know where the hole will be for the light to pop through. Again, I didn't totally plan out the light placement beforehand, so it is going to be a little bit difficult for me to get that hole in there. I'm going to actually have to do a little bit of um, modified work to do it. I won't be able to get a hole punch there either. If you have something that you can hole punch farther in, that would be uh, very helpful, but here I actually just had to poke the hole through in a little bit less neat of a way. But you also want to make sure that your hole is not too much bigger than your LED. I just want my LED to kind of pop through. I don't want a bunch of extra space around it. I want it to kind of blend right into the paper. And again, I'm going to double check here that my anglerfish fits on top and that the light is still in there. I'm also going to make sure that I push down all of this paper here just so that I don't get that poking through and kind of ruining the illusion. So I'm going to poke it through and then I will be running my light through that kind of backwards to pull that paper back with it as it goes through and sorry I am a little bit off camera here but there you go you can see and it's not pertinent that exactly every edge of that little hole is perfect just because you will be covering it up with some color as well as the fish itself and I think enough on top of that will be distracting um, it'll be distracting enough that you won't really notice any imperfections but most of them will be covered up so the first start I'm going to color with these Faber-Castell gelatos. I have a few different colors. I have banana, metallic blueberry. I have this regular blueberry color. I have a metallic grape. And I guess I didn't show you what the last one was called, but yeah, I do have these metallic ones. So yes, right here is metallic grape. And the last one here is black licorice. So I've got a nice gradient, what I think, and I have done some testing beforehand, so this is the test that I did. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow around the initial where my light is going to come up through, and then work into a lighter blue, and then as you can see the darker blue, I'm going to throw in some purple there just to add in. As you can see on my test, I didn't add any purple, but I saw it afterwards and I figured why not use just a little bit of the purple. And then I'm going to dampen my tea towel just slightly and kind of go around and just in little circular motions, I really prefer doing it in circular motions, blend out the color. And again, this tea towel is not wet at all. It's very, very, very damp. The wetter it gets, I find the more it pushes the paper around. As you can see just down at the bottom there, it did actually warp the paper a little bit. If you are concerned about this, you could also use a thicker cardstock or a watercolor paper. As you can see, it made kind of a I don't know, it kind of it tore up the paper a little bit there where I rubbed too hard, where it got a little bit too wet. I'm okay with it because I believe most of that's going to be covered up and I kind of like the effect, but for the most part, had that not happened, I would have been a little bit more preferred. But I'm just checking out now how it looks matted onto the black and I am really liking the way that it looks. So now I'm going to get into the assembly of the card pieces. So I've got all the pieces of the card here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of plain white glue and a tiny paintbrush here just to paint a very thin layer of paint, or uh, sorry, not of paint, of glue onto the pieces of my SVG cutouts. Basically, I just want to stick them together and I want to have a little bit of wiggle room in case they're not lined right up that I can kind of 
slide them into position, which is why I don't want to use a double-sided adhesive for this. I also don't really want much lift in between, and I want a nice strong hold. So I am going to have them glued together with just a basic white glue. What I really like about this SVG is you have this darker shade in the back, which allows you to get those gills and the little spots in great detail without having to actually add those specific pieces on individually. Next, I'm just adding on these little fin pieces the exact same way that I added on the rest of the body, just by adding a little bit of glue with my paintbrush and going in and using my tweezers just so I can get them right exactly where they are. I'm also gonna take my Cricut scoring tool and create some score lines on these fins. I could have again done this on the Cricut, but I wasn't sure I wanted to, but I like the way that it looks with those. So next I'm going to add this small yellow piece on here, which will be sort of the glow of the light. And just add that right in there. And as you can see here next, I'm going to be adding on the eyes and the pupil. I'm just using a small dotting tool to again add some white glue onto the backs of these two circles. And I'm placing it a little bit kind of close to the corner of the mouth just because I want a little bit of a cuter look rather than an angry look. Just make sure that's stuck on really well. Again, I'm going to double check that my light still fits in there so that when it comes to assembly I don't have any problems and we're still good. Next, I'm going to assemble this smaller fish here. Basically, it's just the two pieces and I've done it in two kind of shades of coral. I'm going to have this lighter shade of coral sitting on top of the darker shade to create the shape of the body. I wanted most of the detail to be in the larger angler fish, therefore I don't have much to add for the smaller fish, but you could definitely add some shimmer to them or some scales with a scoring pen or eyes, what have you, but I really just wanted him to be sort of an add-on piece because we do have the the detailed anglerfish as well as the light and the very kind of not busy background but there is a lot going on for the rest of the card so I just wanted to add something else to the card without overpowering it with a lot more detail. So there is my other little fish and he's all done. So now I'm just going back checking my background which is completely dry and I'm realizing I forgot to add the teeth to my anglerfish so that will just go on to the back. And you could potentially slip these in between the two layers of the body, but because of the way the corner of the mouth goes and the gills there, it would kind of peek through. So I am going to just attach it to the back of the anglerfish because realistically nobody's really going to see it. So I'm going to take them and line them up right with the edge of his mouth and make sure that everything is stuck down good before I move on to the next step. So I'm going to double check my placement again, see exactly how I want him lined up. If I want him kind of looking up, if I want him on a little bit of a downturn, figure out where my other fish is going to go and get everything kind of organized before I move on. So next I'm just putting some more of that plain white glue with my small paintbrush onto the back of my angler fish so I get him secured nicely onto the background. This I don't want to add too much layering too with regards to adhesive tapes and or foam tapes just because I want to make sure that the light bulb is lined right up exactly where it should be and I don't want any of the LED light to spill out from underneath where it's supposed to. So I'm just going to line them up, make sure my holes match up here for the light and I changed my mind a little bit. I'm going to have him looking down just a little bit so he's looking down at the other little fish. So I'm going to set this aside now and get this drying just so that it's nice and secure when I start the next step which is going to be assembling all of the light up pieces. So as you can see here I've created a little diagram for myself based on where I think the LED will be, where the negative side of the LED is going to come out, where the positive side is, and where the battery will be. This next little corner here I'll actually show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to make a little bit of a switch. So let's pull my card out and I'm just going to place it onto my backing and draw myself a little hole or a little marking where the light is going to be on my black piece of cardstock. As you can see, I wasn't too far off. Next, I'm going to grab my LED light again, taking note of where the shorter side is and the longer side. Give it one more test before I get everything in there. 
Now I'm just going to bend these prongs out so that they kind of make an angle. This part isn't too important, exactly the angle, none of that's pertinent. Then I'm going to pop my battery on and grab some leftover cardstock to make myself a switch. Basically, I just don't want the light to constantly be on. I want a little push knob when we do want it on. So I'm going to take this small piece of cardstock and fold it over kind of into an L shape. One side of the L is going to go glued onto the paper and then the other one will kind of be free to be bent over top of the battery, which will allow me to add the copper tape to that, which will complete the circuit. So what I'm doing now is just grabbing my copper tape and basically following my lines for my little diagram here of exactly where I want my copper tape to fall or where I want the current to run. I'm going to smooth this out as best I can. This stuff is incredibly sticky and not the easiest to kind of bend around corners. So what I find the easiest way to make the corners is to lay the copper tape flat, then fold it opposite the direction you're trying to go and then fold it back over itself to kind of create the corner. And then you get a kind of a nice corner or a nice seamless corner where everything is flowing through. I'm gonna do the same at the spot where the switch is. And I'm going to carry the copper tape up onto the switch. I'm gonna add a little piece because my copper tape was a little bit too short. Basically because I want when this flap is folded over and hits that battery, it's gonna complete the circuit. So what I want it to do is to be on top of that flap, but I don't want it to be constantly touching the battery. So that's what this switch will do. So I'm just going to get my battery kind of in the right space. I want it touching the end of that negative side of the circuit. And then I'm going to add some copper tape over the two prongs once I've got everything in place. So as you can see here, I've kept the positive line and the negative line separate. I have added the copper tape over top of the two prongs of the LED and the LED is attached directly to my backing sheet. One note that I will mention is the bottom portion of my circuit is a little bit too close to the edge so it might be visible to the card. So for when you're making one of these just be mindful of where you have your circuits running with regards to the edges of the card. I'm going to line my battery up with the negative side down on the negative side of the circuit. And then when I push over, once I've got my battery in the right place, this will take a little bit of little bit of testing here. This again, you can see how it's just kind of near the edge. This is what I was mentioning before. You want to make sure it's only touching the negative side though. And once I flip over that flap, you can see my LED comes on nice and bright. Another thing to mention, some of these LEDs are really, really bright. So um, don't stare at them for too long because you'll get really sore eyes. <laughs> So next what I'm going to do is I'm just adding a little bit more copper tape there just because there was one piece that was peeling and I'm finding where it needs to hit the battery. It wasn't quite all the way there. So I want a full nice connection kind of every time. So now that I've got it, I'm going to add some adhesive to get my battery stuck down. You just want to make sure that your adhesive is not so thick that it blocks the electrical current from passing through and not so thin that it allows your battery to fly around inside of your card. Once your battery is stuck down, I'm just going to double check that my card fits on top. As you can see, I poorly planned where the inside pieces would go and I'm realizing now that I need to cut my backing piece, which is not a big problem. It's just a little bit of a little bit of fussy cutting with my scissors afterwards. So I'm going to flip over my top piece, get my battery back in place because it's not glued down yet and then work out exactly where I want to have my foam tape because this does need to be mounted a little bit higher in order to make sure that that switch is not constantly triggered. I want it to be high enough up that when the card is sitting just normally as it is now, the light is not turned on and the circuit is not completed, but that when I add a little notice to push in a certain area of the card, that circuit will be completed and then the light will go on. So really what I'm doing now is just adding on my foam tape along the edges of the card. And this is again where the placement of that bottom part of the circuit will come into effect. As you'll notice, I'm not putting any foam tape along the bottom of the card for that reason. And I'm testing it again and I'm finding that it actually is a little bit too close. 
as in it's not lifted high enough off the black base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the backing off of this foam tape and I'm going to add another layer just to create just a little bit more height because I don't want the top of that switch touching the battery constantly. I only want it there when somebody is pushing on the button space. So I am going to double up my foam tape here so that there's a little bit more give between the end of that switch and the battery. And then in order to turn the light on, you do need to push down onto the front of the card. So again, just adding a second layer of foam tape on top of the existing layer of foam tape. And then I'm gonna add some pieces of foam tape into the kind of the middle area so that it adds some structure to it. Just because I don't want it to be only the edges of the card that are raised, I want you know, everything kind of raised up so that the middle doesn't sag inwards. And I'm just still adding on this foam tape and then I'm peeling off the backing so that I can get it mounted onto the card base. Mounting it is a little bit difficult just because you want to make sure that that light goes right through the space that we've created for it. So you'll notice that as I'm sticking it down it's kind of coming up and I'm having to move it around a little bit. Here I am just adding a little bit of white glue because I have not attached that battery down yet. Um, would have been easier to do this before, but I had forgotten about it, to be honest, until this point. So I add the glue, I'm double checking its placement, I'm double checking the circuit again because it would be no fun to have this whole card assembled and then realize that something has gone wrong in the finicky parts of the card. And I'm taking another piece of double-sided foam tape and folding that in half so it's a double layer and kind of creating a little bit of a, a bridge underneath where this switch is just because I'm finding that the, the piece of cardstock on its own was a little bit too flimsy and that it was just falling over due to gravity itself and hitting that battery so that the light was going off just whenever it felt like it. So again here I am trying to line up the hole on the front of my card with the light underneath. So now I'm getting it. It is a good sign that now that it's on, the light is not going off all on its own. But I do have some excess on the side, so I'm just gonna cut that off with my scissors. I know that this top area with the anglerfish on it is perfectly squared and even, so so long as I'm following those lines as closely as I can, I'm not too worried about the back portion being uneven. And I'm testing my switch again making sure that everything inside of this card still works. And as you can see there, you've got a little bit of a glimpse of the white foam tape. There it is again, um, which I'm really not a fan of. And they do have black foam tape, which would have worked much, much better in this case. Um, I believe that I had just pulled out the white because I don't have any black. And um, I had originally intended to mount this onto a white card. Wouldn't have been as noticeable on a white card, but because my card is now black, it's pretty noticeable. So I'm just taking a white gel pen here and marking where the push button is to turn the card on and off, or on I guess. Then I'm going to add my second little fish on there because I almost forgot about him. Adding just plain white glue again with that same little tiny paintbrush and adding him kind of just below where that light is. I want him kind of looking up towards the light. So get him pressed on there. And again, Testing that circuit again just because I can't get enough of how cool this card looks when it lights up. And really all I'm going to do now is add some double-sided tape to the back of this card and mount it onto my cardstock base. I had a bit of a video issue here, you'll see in a minute. My filming kind of cut out as I was placing the backing onto the card. So I will show you the placement of the double-sided tape and me just about putting it onto the card base. And then my video cuts out. So then I'll just skip over to showing you some footage of the completed card and doing my outro from there. You'll also see in the final card that I've added a little pull tab underneath the press button. This is just for if I hand it in the mail, the light is not going off unnecessarily and wasting the battery. So I'll just pull that out and push the button and we have a gorgeous light up card.
Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. If you would like the cutting files for this project or any other projects I have shared on my channel, you can check out my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description box below. If you make this project, I would love to see how it turns out, so please tag me in your finished products with at the Creative Cochrane. If you'd like to be kept up to date with what I'm creating, you can subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to receive notifications whenever I post. I've got tons and tons of new cut files and designs coming soon. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.